Hey, what is up guys? My name is Acherno and welcome to a video that will show you guys how to get Cherno Chat, which is the application that we made in the network chat programming series, how to get Cherno Chat up and running on a Linux server. So first of all, let's uh, let, let's export it, right? So what we've got here is Eclipse. Um, and this is of course the entire setup, the exact same setup that we used to actually make, uh, make the application here. Um, so let's go ahead and export it. So first of all, just so we don't get any any errors, let's go up into here and next to the debug button, you'll see a drop down arrow. Make sure you go to debug configurations here and then essentially uh, in arguments, just remove the arguments, okay? Because um, sometimes with Eclipse, it can give you a bit of a bit of an error being like, you can't use program arguments outside of this because you'll have to enter them yourself and blah, blah, blah. So just to avoid any kind of confusion, clear that, hit apply uh, over here and um, and you'll be set. Okay, so let's export this thing. So uh, you can either go file export or you can go right click on this and choose uh, export over here. Okay, right click on the on the project. Um, and there's there's a few options here. So you're probably thinking, you know what, let's um, let, let's uh, let's export it as a runnable jar file because it we want it to be a runnable jar file. If you do that, right, because we have to export both the client and the server as different applications, right? Because obviously what we've done here in this project is essentially created two different applications. One of them is the server for ChernoChat and one of them is the client for ChernoChat. So two applications. If you choose runnable jar file and hit next, you can see it doesn't actually give you an option to select what kind of classes you want. So what you'll end up exporting is uh, class files for all the server stuff, okay? And if you're the client, you don't need that kind of stuff. So in other words, we want to kind of reduce the file size, not that it's going to be big anyway, it's probably going to be less than 50 kilobytes, but um, we definitely don't want to be exporting stuff we don't need. So select jar file over here and hit next. Now the, the cool thing with this is it actually tells you select the resources you want to export. So if we go down here in, uh, in source, we can choose to basically just uncheck the server, okay? And then what we'll get over here in this package, as you can see, is client, client window, login, and online users, okay? You can see that uh, the splitting this up into two packages allows us to select only the stuff we need. So you can see that if we, if we, uh, if we actually just, um, if we pick this, uh, this channel chat thing without the dot server on the end, we have client, client window, login, and online users. This is all we need to run the client side. If we click on the server one, you can see that server, server, client, server, main, you need to identify, that's all we need to run the server side. So basically, just select that one, don't select the server, okay? Um, and you'll see a bunch of other code here, that's all right, export destination, just hit browse on that, and on the desktop, I'm gonna make a, uh, I'm gonna make a file here called um, Cherno Chat uh, Client, since this is the client, and hit save, okay? Um, so now you've got an export destination, okay? And then over here, you've got your export generated class files and resources. You want to have that checked. Everything else, leave that unchecked. Everything will be fine. Compress the contents. Everything's good. Hit next. Um, now over here, it's going to ask, ask you uh, a few things for handling problems. Just don't worry about that, okay? There'll probably be warnings because I think we've got a few warnings such as unused imports. That's all right. You can clean that up if you want. So uh, this this jar packaging options should be fine, just hit next. Now, manifest specification, this is where it gets a bit more real. So um, the only thing you have to do here, right? Don't worry about the manifest file, don't worry about anything. Um, all you really have to do is select the class of the application entry point, okay? You have to select the main class. So the main class, of course, is the class that has the main method. So the, the, uh, the, the pub public static void main string args, that method, okay? Which for us is either in the server main, if we're the server, or in the login, if we're the client. Since we're extracting the client right now, let's just go ahead, let's just go ahead and hit browse, and then it actually comes up here, okay? Login, because this is, it, um, it automatically finds the main method. This is the only main method that we have within this package. Of course, we've got another one in the server package, but we've only selected the client package for export. So hit okay. And that, that's it, okay? Hit finish. And what it should do is uh, is explore stuff. You might get a few uh, warnings. They're just compile warnings. Don't worry about that. Everything is cool, okay? Hit okay. You're done. That is the client. Now we have to do the same thing for the server, okay? So again, we'll just go ahead and, 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 we'll just go ahead and hit file export. Um, select jar file again. I'm going to run through this a bit faster. Over here, uh, basically in under source, let's uncheck the client. So it doesn't say dot client, but the one that doesn't have the dot server appended to the end means it's the client version. Um, you can see this one has dot server. Um, so we'll select everything in server, as you can see we just did here, and we'll, we'll leave the client unchecked. Hit next. Oh, hang on. Let's rename the jar file to be a uh, chat server. Okay. Let's hit next on that. 
Um, we'll leave this as it is. And then the main class, we'll hit browse and you can see here we have server main automatically detected. Hit OK on that and hit finish and you should be ready to go. So now let's see if that even worked, okay? I'm just gonna go ahead and open a finder window, go to um, my desktop here and then you can see that I've got a bunch of stuff. I've actually got two other ones because that's what I exported for the video uh, yesterday as well as some other things. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that so it doesn't cause any confusion. So here we have um, here we have two files. We've got the server and the client. If we just double click on the client, that should at least run for us and we should see how that works. So you can see it does bring up this login thing. So basically it's working, okay? So let's go ahead and close that. Right, so now we've got the two files. Let's go ahead and upload them to the server and I'll just switch over. I'll stop this video here and I'll continue it with the server view in hand. All right, so here we are in the server view. I'm connected via SSH using a utility called Putty, um, which is basically just an SSH client. So I've SSH'd into my server and here you see the command line for my server. So this is Linux, this is running Debian 6, okay? That is the Linux distribution. Um, that's not too important, okay? This will run under anything. The first thing you have to make sure is that you actually have Java installed onto your server, okay? So the quick way to check that is just by typing in Java, then space, then hyphen version, okay? That will tell you what version you've got. You can see I've got 1.7.0 underscore 45. I think that's the latest version of the, at the time of me recording this. So the point is, we are at the latest version of Java. We actually have Java, okay? That's the important thing. Cherno Chat is actually written in uh, in Java 6, so even 1.6 will work, but um, we've got 1.7, which is even better. Let's just clear that clear that screen. So what we wanna do now is uh, is actually get the Cherno Chat thing. So I've already made a folder. Um, I've added a directory on my server called Cherno Chat, okay? Um, that's great, so now we wanna actually get it. Right, we need to get that jar file that we just exported from our Mac or from Windows if you're using that. Um, we need to get that into you all onto the server, right? Um, numerous ways of doing that, right? The way that I've done it, I've already placed it into this directory. I've done it by simply um, by simply using FTP or actually SFTP, which is the SSH version of FTP, to get um, to get the file onto it. So I've just literally uploaded it from my uh, from my from my desktop onto the server, and sorry, my Mac is making a lot of noise here. It's really hot today, by the way. It's, um, the top today is 44 degrees Celsius, which is like 105 or so degrees Fahrenheit, I'm not sure, but it's freaking hot today. Anyway, point is, um, that, uh, you need to get the file onto your server somehow, right? I've done that via FTP, essentially, um, SFTP, okay? Now, there are other ways of getting this. If you guys have the file uploaded somewhere, I don't have the exported jar file uploaded anywhere. You guys are gonna have to export it for yourselves. But of course, you could use something like uh, wget, for example, if you have it on a web server. There's a lot of different ways to get the file, but point is, you need the file onto your server. Once you've got the file, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit ls. You can see that I've got one file in this directory, chernochatserver.jar, okay? That is the jar that we just exported. Now, to run this, it's gonna be really simple, okay? All you have to do is hit java hyphen jar, then the name, which is Cherno Chat Server. I'll just hit tab and it will recognize that. So java hyphen jar, uh, Cherno Chat Server dot jar, and then one command line argument, which is the port at which you want to start the server on. Okay? So for example, we've been doing it all this time 8192, and then hit enter. Okay? And you can see it says over here server started on port 8192, and this is everything, right? We can go ahead and we can go slash help and it will tell us all of our available commands. We can go ahead and do slash clients, it will tell us who's online, no one's online right now. But um, essentially what we get here, in fact, let me just, um, right now I'm just gonna go ahead and, uh, I was actually gonna get you guys to all join this, um, have it like a little event and see how many people we get onto this and see how many people the server could handle. In fact, I will, you know what, let's do that. Uh, actually, no, <laughs> let's not do that tonight because I actually have stuff to do, I forgot. But um, at one point, I think I might do that, okay? So anyway, the point is, um, I'm just opening the client now on my Mac. I'm gonna try and connect to that and we're gonna see what happens, okay? So, um, and I'm, I'm gonna have to blur out my IP address. Uh, but I'll call it uh, yarn space Mac, that'll be the username. IP address for this is the journal.com since, since it is my web server and then we'll log in. And then over, over here is, oh good, it didn't have my IP address. It says yarn Mac connected. So I've connected now and I can say something like, hey, um, and you can see that it gets all that data. If I go ahead and do slash clients, uh, you guys will see that uh, that here I am with that IP address that I'm about to blur out. But um, that is essentially everything that you need to know, okay? And that works as it does, okay? Which is wonderful. So that's how it works. And if you even, even enable raw mode, you can see everything that's happening. So you can see the pings that happen here. Um, 
and all of that good stuff. So anyway, that is that's pretty much how you run it on a Linux server, particularly particularly Debian in this in this in, in this example. Although of course, the Linux distributions are all pretty much the same, so you'll be you'll be fine. Um, anyway, that's gonna wrap up this video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the like button. I'll put up another video probably because I want I want, again I want you guys to um to get into this and uh and and we'll see if we can have some fun chatting to to each other on this uh on this server okay on this um via channel chat okay so yes so follow me on Twitter if you don't want to miss that and I'll see you guys later goodbye all right so one thing that I actually forgot to mention was how to actually shut down the server so of course let's first of all disable raw mode um unknown command. There we go, raw mode off. It's just because of the other stuff we got an un unknown command. Um, anyway, so raw mode is now off, great. Um, what I'm gonna do here is uh, is um, shut down the server. So of course we can just type in slash quit, okay? Just in case you guys didn't know that. So if we type in slash quit, hit enter, it will say it'll disconnect us, of course, and you can see that, it, that we're back into control here and we can clear the screen and we're back in control of our server, okay? So that is how you stop the server. See you guys next time, goodbye.